Can't decide in torn between a romantic, comedy, action, or an indie film to watch for the weekend? Well, well, well. Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast is your ultimate guide to the latest movies. Join us as we dissect the latest on the blockbusters. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Movie Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Heidi, and uh, it is a bit sad for me today because I am not joined by my wonderful co-host, Ariane, but uh, never fear because I will be walking you through some wonderful films today. In fact, they are really two films that are adorable and cute and ones that I feel will, uh, will warm my soul a bit, even in Ariane's absence. So, we are talking about Wreck-It Ralph. We will be talking about the re- first Wreck-It Ralph film and the new one that is out in theaters now, Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet. I am very excited about this. And um, let, me, let, me just, let me just preface this by saying, this is really a confession time for me. I have movie anxiety, I guess. I'm just going to coin that term now. Uh, it's kind of like, When I know that I'm going in to a kind of heavy, serious film that will really um, just make me feel so many different things, like um, like when I was a a teen and I watched uh, Titanic, which just made me so sad and I was depressed for like half a day after watching it, or if I'm just going to go see anything more serious that is just going to have some some themes that will be uh, a lot that I'll have to think about and chew on for a while, I get nervous. Because I feel like if I'm going to an art museum or a gallery or something, if I see a wonderful painting or a sculpture or just a wonderful drawing or print or photograph or whatever, I, if it stirs in me deep feelings, I feel that I can walk away and then I can discuss it with someone else. And then if I want, I can come back and view it again. I don't feel like that when I go to see a movie, especially in theaters, because if I am in theaters, one, I have paid for it, so I will not walk out on it. Uh, Two, it's dark. I can't see anything, despite all the lights that are on the ground. It's, like, still not helpful. And usually I'm not at the end of the row, so there are, like, other people around me, so I feel like I'm just going to step on them and spill their popcorn. So I get, like, movie anxiety when I walk into a theater and I'm like, this is going to be heavy, and I'm just going to have to deal with all of these, uh, these emotions that will be brought up for me and these topics that I'm going to have to think about and difficult things that I will have to discuss and maybe bring up with other people. I get nervous about that. So when we decided to talk about Wreck-It Ralph, uh, I was so relieved because I thought, finally, I can walk into a movie theater and I will not feel this stress and this weight of movie anxiety hanging over me. And that did, like, it did not disappoint in that sense. I definitely was very relieved that we got to watch an adorable animated feature with all the bright, beautiful colors of Disney, and it was fun, and um, I loved the game nostalgia that comes with it. Anyway, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but I want to say, if you were going in and you're like, man, I'm not, I want to go into a fun movie for the holidays, bring the family, Wreck-It Ralph is always good, um, as are a lot of Disney films, but I would say Wreck-It Ralph will definitely do that for you. So, I want to start by talking about the first Wreck-It Ralph film, and then we will move into the new one that is in theaters. So to start off, Wreck-It Ralph, the first film, came out in 2012. And really what happens is um, this, all, this all takes place in a California arcade, and uh, Wreck-It Ralph, or Ralph, is a bad guy in an arcade game called Fix-It Felix. Ralph is frustrated because Felix gets all of the admiration and really just because he's the good guy who like fixes what Ralph wrecks in the game. And um, Ralph finally catches a break when he's kind of like almost like sarcastically given a promise that if he can come back with a hero's medal, he will finally get to fit in with all of the other Fix-It Felix games characters. 
So he heads out from his own game to some of the other games in the arcade to go and get a medal. And in his quest, he accidentally unleashes a dangerous psi bug into the whole arcade, and he has to join um, Sugar Rush game character uh, Vanilla P. Von Sweets, and uh, she is sort of ostracized and has a bit of a glitch, and really he hopes to go out and get his medal and become a hero. And uh, this film is adorable. Uh, it's directed by Rich Moore, produced by Clark Spencer, screenplay by Phil Johnston and Jennifer Lee. Um, I... I think it's really cute. There are a lot of elements in here that I think make it a good, adorable film. Uh, firstly, there is voice acting, which is great. Uh, there's also a nostalgia element about this film, which I really enjoy because it's arcade games. And then there's also just the general animation, which I just found absolutely adorable. Uh, basically, I wrote notes while watching this, and the notes just kept saying cute, cute, cute over and over again. So let me start off by talking about some of the voice acting, because I think the voice acting is spectacular. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph is voiced by John C. Riley, and I really liked him in this. His, uh, his voice is deeper and lower, and I thought that really contributed well to, uh, to Ralph, because the character Ralph is this really big guy. He has like giant fists that he'll use just to like wreck things, you know, because that's, that's his M.O., and uh, in the game Fix It Felix, he uh, just like climbs up this apartment building and wrecks the walls. And then Fix It Felix has to come in and fix it. And then they like climb up the ladder to get to the top of the building. And uh, that's why all the little other characters in the game that live in this apartment building love Felix because he fixes everything. But they don't like Ralph, uh, even though he's not really a mean guy. It's just who he plays in the video game. And um, anyway, I think he's great. You also get to meet in this film Vanellope Von Schweetz, who uh, is voiced by Sarah Silverman. And uh, Vanellope is a racer in the game Sugar Rush, but you also learn that she is a glitch in the game. I think Sarah Silverman's voice is great uh, in this for the character, but I don't know if like she just does this on her own or if they like pitch her, like change her pitch in editing, but it's like this like <laughs> whiny little kid voice that works really well for such a tiny like pint-sized little character. Like Vanellope has like like sugar candies like in her hair. They look like little barrettes and it's adorable. Uh I I don't know how they did how uh Sarah Silverman got her voice to sound like that. It's like a mix of annoying but also it fits. <laughs> um Vanellope is uh, rebellious and has a bit of a salty side, <laughs> even though she's in a sweet game, uh, which is partially because she's kind of like a glitch, but that fits her pretty well with Sarah Silverman's voice because Sarah Silverman does have that edge to her, as we all know from her comedy. You also see uh, Jack McBriar, who uh, voices Fix-It Felix, who is the repairman in the game Fix-It Felix. You also see Jane Lynch, who plays uh, Sergeant Tamora Jean Calhoun, and she is the lead character of a game called Hero's Duty. Um, you also get Alan Tudyk as King Candy, who is the ruler of Sugar Rush. Uh, and I just think everyone in this, in this movie does the voices so well. I'm so impressed. Uh, also, a fun fact, the concept of Wreck-It Ralph was first developed at Disney in the late 1980s under the working title Hero Score. Then it was redeveloped and reconsidered several times, like in the late 1990s. It took on the working title Joe Jump. Then in the mid-2000s, it was named Rebot uh, Ralph. Reboot, I'm sorry, Reboot Ralph. So I just think it's great that this game started in the 80s. And if you watch it, there's a lot of arcade games that you will recognize from that time until now. Um, if you go to arcades now, I feel like a lot of these games will echo what you might actually play, which I think is adorable. Also, this film was nominated for an Oscar, and um, there are just so many little details in this game, which are kind of adorable. Uh, so because this is really the first film of a Disney you know, fantasy fiction world. There's a lot of world building and that's not abnormal for a movie like this, but I definitely felt it a lot because a lot of, they'd say things and be like, what are they talking about? What does that even mean? For example, um, glitching. And I never really thought about that, but I mean, I'm not a big gamer. I will not lie. I am not. So it didn't really uh, hit me. The gaming part of this movie didn't hit me in that sort of nostalgic way for my own experience of gaming. But they bring up gaming terms like glitching. I didn't know what that meant. Um, they say going turbo all the time. I didn't know what that meant. They talk about like what it is to be unplugged. And there are so many little elements that I didn't 
like I kept asking, like I was asking my friend who was watching with me, I'm like, what are they talking about? What does it mean to go turbo? And the, as I said, there's just a lot of world building and that happens all the time in these kind of um, fantasy uh, movies because you don't, you the world is new. They've created it. So they have to inform you about it. So I wouldn't fault the movie for that, but I would say it was definitely something that stood out to me that at least in the beginning of the film, I was kind of annoyed. I was like, why, why do they keep saying this? I don't even, I don't even know what they mean. Anyway, it is a very adorable film. Uh, you get this wonderful quest that they go on. And there are some Disney films that I walk away from thinking, oh, I really see the moral there they have for children. I didn't feel that very strongly with the first Wreck-It Ralph. I will talk about that when I get to talking about the second Wreck-It Ralph film, Ralph Breaks the Internet, which definitely has higher um, uh, talk about morals, I would say, like a moral of the story. Uh, not that I'm saying the first Wreck-It Ralph is like a like heathen movie. It just doesn't have a moral message as strongly as I felt in the second one. Uh, I will say, though, because you're dealing with Ralph, who is a bad guy, he has this very heavy desire, like, I'm a bad guy, but I want to be seen as someone else. I'm a bad guy, but I want to be uh, accepted. And you see that echoed in the character Vanellope because she is a glitch in the game. Uh, in her game Sugar Rush, and she just wants to race like all the other racers, but she's not allowed to by King Candy because she's a glitch, and if she, the glitch, crosses the finish line, the game will be reset, and uh, King Candy doesn't want that. So you get these two characters who very much like, I, don't, I want to change my circumstance, I want to be someone else, I want to be accepted, and uh, they form a friendship reluctantly at first, but it becomes really adorable uh, between this little tiny girl with like a Sarah Silverman like sort of squeaky voice and then the big Wreck-It Ralph by John C. Riley. And you really get to see that. I think it's a theme that starts like friendship and you see that really echoed and morphed a bit in the second film. But I didn't really see the content of like um, morals until I watched the second film and reflected on the first. Because after watching the first film, it was like, oh, that was fun. That was cute. Um, I loved all of like the world building of like the candy and everything in the game Sugar Rush. I thought that was very adorable. Also like in Wreck-It Ralph, uh, in Ralph's game, Fix-It Felix, there's so much use of like little pixels to show that it's a game in the animation style. And just the way that characters move and walk, I think is very ingenious and very adorable. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, I would, so as I said, it's not a message heavy movie. There is the message of friendship because uh, Ralph and Vanellope become best friends. And there's also the message of wanting to be accepted. And um, like, you don't have to do all these crazy things to be accepted. You have to be yourself and love yourself and accept yourself as Ralph has to accept himself um, as a bad guy. So I think that is adorable. Uh, I, I loved it for that reason, I will say, um, because it was fun, but it wasn't too heavy on trying to like preach something to me. Uh, and I thought that was really cute. Uh, so before we go on a break, I just wanted to mention to you all, Christmas is coming up. And while we're talking about Wreck-It Ralph being wonderful for children, kids also like a lot of Christmas gifts. And um, maybe they're young, they're not quite into reading a bunch yet, or they are big readers, but they're always active and doing other things. They don't have time to sit down and open a book. So lucky for all of you parents out there, if you're looking for a great gift, you can look at Audible. Right now, for a limited time, you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month, and that's more than half off the regular price. So you can give the gift of listening either to your, uh, your kids or even just to yourself. Uh, it's a great gift for anyone on your list. To get this deal, go to audible.com slash gsmcmovie, or you can text gsmcmovie to 500-500. GSMC movie is one word. And once again, that is audible.com slash GSMC movie or text GSMC movie to 500 500. And that's how you can get this wonderful deal to give everyone on your list, all of your kids and yourself, this wonderful gift, gift of Audible this Christmas. So we are going to take a break and then we'll be back and talk about Wreck It Ralph. Ralph breaks the internet. 
Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Movie Podcast. We are continuing to talk about Wreck-It Ralph. And uh, before the break, we mentioned Wreck-It Ralph, the first film, which is from 2012. Uh, we also mentioned my, my movie anxiety and how watching this movie helps ease that a little bit because I'm strapped in for a fun story. We are now going on to the second film, Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet. And this is in theaters right now, so 2018, so you should definitely go see it. Um, I mean, in my opinion, I think you should go see it, specifically if you have kids. Um, I'm also not a big children's movie fan, but I did like these films, so I would uh, support it in that sense. Um, as I've mentioned, sometimes I feel movie anxiety because there's going to be like a really heavy, scary, or deep film. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet, to me, definitely is a little bit heavier on themes, like with morals that they're trying to teach you and um, it's a bit heavier it's a bit darker uh, like literally so like there are parts in the movie where the like the colors are darker you go to a darker place um, and we'll get to that we'll get to that but I would say this was a little this was a little bit heavier just just a little bit just a little bit still good for kids though so as I've already mentioned Wreck-It Ralph 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 Breaks the Internet is in theaters now it is directed by Rich Moore and Phil Johnston, uh, produced by Clark Spencer. And um, if you will, if you recognize, those are the same directors who made the first one. Um, I actually believe that, uh, I believe Rich Moore and Phil Johnston, the directors of these films, also made Zootopia. And um, I want to say it's Rich Moore. It might be Phil, but I'm pretty sure it's Rich. Um, he also does like the... I believe he also does like The Simpsons or like adult cartoons. So there is a bit of a different uh, humor that I think if you're a parent in both films, you will appreciate a little bit more. It's not too torturous if you're just bringing kids to a movie. There are some jokes that I think will land for parents as well. Um, so the screenplay is again written by Phil Johnston and Pamela Ribbon. Uh, and you will recognize some similar some similar characters here. Oh, also I wanted to mention that Phil Johnston, along with uh, uh, directing the second Rocket Ralph movie, he also uh, did the screenplay for the first one. And um, just to clarify, Rich Moore is the sole director for Rocket Ralph, and he came on to do Rocket Ralph too, um, but Phil Johnston did not direct the first one, but he did the screenplay for it. Uh, so. All, we have the returning John C. Riley as the voice actor for Wreck-It Ralph. We also have Sarah Silverman returning as Vanellope uh, Von Schweetz. We again have Jack McBriar as Fix-It Felix. Jane Lynch as Sergeant Tamora Jean Calhoun. Uh, introducing in this movie are some new characters. There is Gal Gadot as Shank. And you have uh, Taraja P. Henson as Yes who is uh, a really fun character that is <laughs> on a like a video hosting site called BuzzTube, which is like a strange amalgamation of BuzzFeed and YouTube, which I have questions why they didn't just say YouTube. I don't know. Maybe there was just some, some problem with the studio. I don't know. But um, anyway, I would say Gal Gadot and uh, Taraja both do great jobs in this uh, film. Their voices, I feel like, are perfect for... Uh, for the characters that they represent. And uh, I really feel like in the both the Wreck-It Ralph first film and the second one, they do a really good job with voice acting. I really um, see that very strongly. I think they got a great cast. And um, I, I just like... I, I want to say that... I don't think the voice acting here is better than other Disney films, but I particularly like John C. Riley, so I think that they picked really good actors uh, for this movie. Uh, so, 
Uh, six years ago is when the first Wreck-It Ralph takes place, and since then, uh, Ralph and Vanellope have become be the best of friends, and um, they hang out after work, and work for them is participating in the arcade games. So after the arcade closes and all the kids go home, all the games get to go hang out together and go to the, the little like uh, bar game and drink root beer and hang out in the, uh, the surge protector. Again, so many parts of the movie in the second one come from the world building up the first kind of similar to other fantasy and Disney where it just builds on itself. Uh, you really see that come through in the second one because you're not even questioning what the surge protector, like how that even works in the game. You kind of understand if you've seen the first one. So uh, Ralph and Penelope hang out um, and Ralph loves the mundane. He kind of loves the repetition of his life because now he's accepted in the Fix-It Felix game. And uh, Vanellope is also a great, he's the most popular racer now on Sugar Rush. Um, and uh, Ralph loves the mundane, but Vanellope is not a big fan of it. And um, through some twists and turns, Ralph and Vanellope have to go to the internet in order to save Vanellope's game from being unplugged. And upon going to the internet, going to the internet, as we all have experienced in logging on to the internet, there are uh, <laughs> so many things out there. And they go on quite the adventure trying to find uh, a steering wheel for Vanellope's game so that it can continue to be played. And they come across so many fun characters like Gal Gadot, as, who plays Shank, as I've mentioned, and uh, the character Yes, who is voiced by Taraja P. Henson. So, uh, along with this, there are some really supportive parts that I want to, uh, some really fun parts that I want to mention, like when Ralph, oh, well, not Ralph, it's really, well, Ralph sort of comes upon them. It's mostly Vanellope, but Vanellope's interaction with the Disney princesses. Because Disney is such a big company, the internet world in Wreck-It Ralph 2 is so full of these rich Disney characters because they can. And just like how Disney has like the Disney.com website or My Disney, they have that in this movie too because of course they own the rights to it so they can just put it everywhere. And so you see Stormtroopers, you see all of the, you see Eeyore and so many fun characters, all the Guardians, you see Groot. And uh, Vanellope comes across all the Disney princesses and she has a great, I would say probably the most humorous Part of the film is when she comes across the Disney princesses, but also this is in the trailer of the film, so that's a bold move on Disney's part. Um, it's very funny. They also run up, uh, Ralph and Vanellope also have a funny, I think it's a funny part, when they come across a pop-up advertiser, <laughs> and that character's name is Spamly, and um, kind of like whenever you go onto the internet and you're immediately met by pop-up ads, that's kind of what Spamly is supposed to represent, and I think that part is very funny. They also have a search bar character that is very funny, and um, just the ways that they represent the internet with these humorous characters I think is really well done. Uh, as I mentioned, the first film is not heavy on like preachy moral content. The second one, to me, is much heavier in that, and I really noticed it. And at first, upon watching this film, I was annoyed because I was like, I just want a fun, uplifting film. I don't want to have to think about all these things. But they present it in a way that is pretty fun and pretty easy to understand. And, you know, it's, it's not difficult to swallow. So I think they do a good job in that. Uh, some of the things in here that stood out to me in terms of moral content that they're trying to teach is about supportive female friendships. This really stood out to me. Because, as I've mentioned, there's the character Shank, and Shank and Vanellope meet. And Shank is part of the racing game, and uh, she is this really amazing racer. And Vanellope is also part of a racing game, and they bond over racing and their mutual respect for each other and their abilities. And I was impressed by that, because, first of all, it's a female friendship that is not you know, based on jealousy, and they're not fighting over a boy. So good job, Disney. I feel like they did that pretty well. I was impressed by that and also saddened by how rarely I get to see this kind of content. Um, but another part that I enjoyed uh, from this film is uh, that Ralph and Vanellope have to learn how to manage their own secure insecurities and to find independence um, in like a new chapter of their friendship. So as I've mentioned uh, the first film uh, occurs and where they become friends and then six years later is when this second film takes over. So they've had like six years of friendship. 
their best friends, and that still carries on into this film, but they also have to learn how to be a little independent of each other, how to exist in their friendship without the other always being there. And um, you see some moments of insecurities about that friendship creep in, like when Ralph and Vanellope are at BuzzTube, the sort of YouTube-like website, and Vanellope wants to go off and basically be a pop-up ad to advertise Ralph's uh, BuzzFeed, BuzzTube, oh, that's gonna, that's gonna catch me up. Um, she wants to go out and uh, advertise for Ralph's videos, and Ralph doesn't want her to go because then they'll be separated, they won't be together, and he's afraid she'll get lost. And um, he, you see his insecurity of like, we always have to be together, we always have to be together, that kind of clingy friend who is worried about you when you're not there, and you know, like, when you text and they don't immediately text back. Um, he's kind of like that type of friend. And so you see that insecurity in him and Vanellope assures him like, no, I'll be fine. And then she goes off and has a little, uh, little adventure on her own. So you see a little examples of this throughout the film. And then you really see the insecurity come out in a very clever way. I feel later in the film, which I will not spoil. Uh, and I really enjoy that part. Uh, if you have not caught on yet, this film is very dense. There are lots of layers to it, which I did not feel in the first one. So I'm impressed by that. Um, also, as I've mentioned, there is this like change in their friendship, and this adventure really catapults that. And um, you just like see Vanellope want to pursue her own dreams. Because as I've mentioned, she's a little tired of the mundane in the arcade, and Ralph loves it. So Vanellope really has this, um, this just experience of wanting to grow herself, and she wants to uh, grow in her racing as well. And uh, it's kind of like how she deals with that with Ralph, and he doesn't want her to go, and he doesn't want her to grow separately from him because she'll be away from him. Uh, and I just I think that's adorable. Uh, and I just want to continue talking about that. Uh, and I also wanted to mention, since we're talking about... Um, these games and this type of nostalgia. Uh, it really just reminds me of when I feel nostalgia when I read some of my favorite books. And these are usually for me books that I've read in like high school or novels like uh, Animal Farm, things that bring back nostalgia for me that I enjoy. And uh, what better time to, to use this nostalgia than during the holiday season? Because that's when nostalgia really hits me the hardest. <laughs> so maybe you're into some of the nostalgic arcade games that they mention in Wreck-It Ralph. Well, I'm sure you can find a book on that. And what better place to find a book than on Audible? Uh, and right now, for a limited time, you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month, which is more than half off the regular price. So you can give yourself the gift of listening or give it to anyone on your list by going to um, audible.com slash GSMC movie, or you can text GSMC movie to 500 500. Once again, that is audible.com slash GSMC movie, or text GSMC movie to 500 500. GSMC, is mov GSMC movie is one word, so please use this code and get this wonderful deal just in time for Christmas. Thank you so much. We will take a break and then be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
Welcome back to the GSMC Movie Podcast. We are continuing our show. We are talking about Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet. As I've mentioned before the break, there are um, some themes in here that I think are very well executed, really, by Disney. And um, another part that I wanted to mention, as I had brought up in the past as a funny moment with some Disney princesses that Penelope meets, I think one of the things that is interesting about this film is it's a little bit more irreverent in a way. Uh, Disney, to me, always seemed like the friend who could just never take a joke, especially if it was about themselves. But now, uh, like you see it in this movie, Wreck-It Ralph, and um, I, I just feel like Disney is maybe loosening up a little bit. But with the Disney princesses, they make fun of themselves a bit because there's like the trope of like, a prince always has to save you and you're a princess and that's what makes you a princess. And um, the Disney princesses realize that Vanellope is also a princess and then they take on her wardrobe, like uh, pajamas, sweatpants, hoodies, and then they all talk about how comfortable they are, which is sort of making fun of like the Disney princesses always wear the beautiful dresses and that's when like little girls dress up as princesses for Halloween. They have these big ball gowns. Um, maybe not like Moana or Pocahontas, but they all love the comfortable pajamas that Vanellope shows them. And um, just like the fact that they can make fun of that they finally get to wear comfortable clothing, I think is kind of funny. And I'm surprised that Disney is doing that. I think Disney is just like the king of being square, but I think they're breaking out of that, which is interesting to see. I feel a little uncomfortable about Disney making fun of themselves, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully they get better. Um, also, because they're in the internet, uh, there are a lot of references like uh, to uh, eBay and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. And I'm a little concerned that, like, and all the pop-ups that come up, I'm a little concerned that will make this film not age well because there are so many very current references. I feel like the first Wreck-It Ralph film doesn't have that because they're already talking about nostalgic video games and arcade games. And I feel like that'll be something that is now a little bit more in our past and we can still kind of laugh at it um, and still find it charming. I'm not sure how this film will age because of all of their very current references. Um, and I, I don't know. I think that's interesting. They bring up like a very violent race game, which is the game that um, Shank is in. Uh, and it kind of is sort of like a, like a more mild Grand Theft Auto like it has like fire and sharks and flamethrowers and all things like that. So I'm curious to see how this film will progress over time. Uh, just to end our show talking about Wreck-It Ralph, I wanted to mention a few more observations that I think uh, just to bring home that this film is really more of a deeper, more preachy, moral film. Um, so this film reminds me a little bit about how Inside Out, the other Disney film, did a great representation of like intangible things. Like they're building the internet in this way that is really interesting, but then they're building this beautiful world of the internet, but with very vulnerable characters. Sort of like how Inside Out builds the world of like the psyche and inner workings of uh, like a preteen and all the vulnerabilities that exist within that world. They're doing that in Wreck-It Ralph 2 um, with Vanellope and Ralph, and they're letting these characters develop in a way that is vulnerable. And I really enjoyed seeing that. Um, like, for example, Vanellope wants to pursue a dream of racing in this game with Shanks because it's much more complicated racing, and Vanellope's a little bit tired of her game, Sugar Rush, where it's so predictable. Um, but she's a little scared to like tell Ralph because she doesn't want to let him down because he's her best friend, and that would mean if she goes to play this game, they'd be separated, and she doesn't want to hurt his feelings. Um, and she doesn't want to, like, disappoint him, you know? And she's afraid how he'll take it. So Ralph and Vanellope have to navigate uh, this, like, new phase of their friendship. Along with navigating Vanellope's friendship with Shank, who is this new character, um, who I mentioned before, I think it's great that Disney built this female friendship where they support each other as opposed to tearing each other down. Um, and so kind of like Ralph has to deal with how Vanellope is going to have this other friend, but that doesn't mean he's being replaced in Vanellope's life. They're still like besties, you know, and I'm really glad that they did that. I think that's an important theme of like your friendships can grow, which I think is great for kids. Um, and even for me, it's a wonderful reminder, um, just that even if your friend wants to go off and pursue their dreams over, you know, in this place and do this thing that maybe you don't, um, enjoy as much as they do, that that's still okay. And you can still remain close. Um, another thing that they bring up 
is like the comment section on uh, videos because as I've mentioned there's like BuzzTube and Ralph makes these like YouTube like videos for BuzzTube and then he ends up seeing the comments that come with and come with it and some of the nice ones that are encouraging but then he also sees some of the negative ones the ones that are kind of hating on him and how to deal with like the darkness of some of those comments um he also sees like the waxing and waning of public tastes like the interest that people have for his videos and then how quickly that leaves and um i just i think you know they were really touching on that which we all kind of know but it was interesting to see it portrayed in this cartoony imaginary world um uh, you know, also, you kind of get this, like, just sense of, like, how the internet can make, like, monsters out of all of us, um, which I feel like if you watch the film, you'll know what I mean by monsters. Um, it can really take your insecurities and it can project them in a way um, just using the internet for, you know, like the comments section or something. Or maybe you're on Facebook and you're seeing your friend hanging out with other people, how the internet can take the existing insecurities and because of the things you see on it just amplify them and i just think they did that really well in a way that kids can understand and i'm i'm impressed by that um just as i've mentioned there are you know plot twists that i didn't see coming i enjoyed that and um i don't know we'll see maybe disney i think disney's loosening up so i'm interested to see where that goes uh also i want to mention there are two post credit scenes which you should stay for to watch them uh this movie Disney always knows the exact algorithm to make me like cry in a public place and it's Disney so it's just like in a theater full of children which is my least favorite place to cry uh, and so at the end of the film I was already emotional and on the verge of tears I was definitely sniffling and then they show me this post credit scene that everyone thought was so funny and I almost cried so I was like why would they do that to that character again you will know what I mean when you watch it so I highly suggest you stay and see both post credit scenes. And um, I think you should go check out Wreck-It Ralph. Take the kids. I think it'd be a great movie to see together uh, just in time for uh, the holiday family time. So thank you all so much for listening to this GSMC podcast. I hope you tune in next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to movies music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program